Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of the Juno where you literally know what you need to know. Today, alhamdulillah, we are privileged to have Sheikh Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips. And before we get to know what we need to know, stay tuned and we will be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, how are you doing? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. I'm so excited to have you on the Did you know show. It's my pleasure to be here with <laughs> Did you. Did you know you will be here? No, I didn't. Qadr Allah. Qadr Allah wa ma sha fa'al. Alhamdulillah. How is the online university going? Alhamdulillah, we're moving forward. Gradually. Yeah, strength to strength. MashaAllah. Waiting on our latest accreditation from the Gambia. Okay. And um, Alhamdulillah, expanding into other areas no. of uh, education for the banks, no. bank employees, okay. you know, training and training programs. Um, yeah. So you have a lot of students from different parts of the globe? Of course, yeah, we have over 400,000 students. 400,000 students? Yeah, so, wow. you know, it's, it's, it's distributed all over the globe. The, the, the largest numbers are actually from America Mashallah. and the UK. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Inshallah, I'm going to apply, Inshallah, for a master's in Islamic studies. I see it's free. Well, it's fr tuition free. Okay. Meaning you don't pay for your classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you pay a registration fee. Mashallah. Whether you take two classes or you take four classes, it's mm. all the same. Okay. Yeah. And you own a, a university, an online university. It's only right if we talk about the importance of seeking for knowledge. You know, to what extent is Islam concerned with seeking for knowledge? Well, seeking knowledge is, of course, an obligation, as the Prophet oh, had sorry. said, Talabul Elmi Farida ala kulli Muslim. Seeking knowledge is obligatory for every Muslim. No. So, this uh, quest to understand the religion is something uh, strongly emphasized in, the, in Islam. No. Whereas, you know, in other systems, the common people are not really encouraged to, to seek knowledge per mm. se. They, it's left to the priests and the, the ministers, the, the monks or whatever. No. Whereas from the Islamic perspective, we don't leave that in the hands of scholars, mm. religious scholars. No. Uh, religious scholars are the guides and the leaders, but the average person is encouraged strongly to understand the religion himself or herself. Well, inshallah. The Prophet ﷺ said that if Allah wishes goodness for you, He grants you faqih uh, you know, a deep and a proper understanding of the religion. What's your take on this hadith? Well, you know, this is uh, for those who have taken that particular path. Okay. You know, the path of uh, striving for knowledge in the religion where they've dedicated themselves. Mm. Then a one who does so, then Allah will give them that uh, deeper understanding no. beyond the surface understanding of the texts mm -hmm. you know but the average person it, it's ap applicable to them too in that if they make an effort to understand allah will help them to understand and oh, it no. makes sense because no. why would allah make it difficult and block you from understanding when you're striving to understand mm. Mashallah. Mm -hmm. So, Sheikh, how do we know the right scholars with the correct creed to take knowledge from? Well, the key is what the Prophet oh, left Salam. behind him. Mm. You know, as he said, I left behind you two things. No. You know, if you hold on firmly to them, you'll never go astray. No. The Book of Allah and my Sunnah. No. So, that becomes the criterion that if the scholar, the teacher, the Sheikh, whatever, Malam, you know, is teaching things which are not backed up okay. by the Quran and the Sunnah, Sunnah, then you know this is the one you must get away from. Mm. You know, that's the, the, the sign of the danger sign, we could no. say, you know. So that's your fri first criterion, that whenever they're teaching you, explaining you, they're giving you verses from the Quran, they're giving you, you know, hadiths, you know, authentic hadith, they're giving, give, this is the basis of their knowledge. Much, much, so you don't find them just talking from their heads. Mm. You know, my idea, my understanding, sure. I see it this way and that, you know. So when it becomes so much uh, personal, mm. then that's a danger sign. No. Because the religion is first, call Allah, call Rasulullah. That's what it's first. 
the Quran and the Sunnah. And that's it. You know. Uh, yeah. And no, after that, it's not just that's it. Okay. Because you do have to have an understanding. No. Because that Quran needs to be put in a context. Mm. The Sunnah also be, needs to be put in a context. No. You can't just uh, read it and whatever comes to your mind as to what you think it is, mm. you know, <laughs> then that's misguidance also, Most danger, definitely. you know, danger yeah. sign. So, it, it, but that's the foundation. No. If you find that the scholar or the person teaching is not quoting from the Quran and the Sunnah you on a regular basis, it. then yeah, run away. That's yeah. a danger sign. Okay. Now, if you find, okay, they're teaching Quran and Sunnah, etc., but, um, you know, they are giving unorthodox mm. interpretations, right? They're giving explanations, you know, you, you have some idea, it's not you, you, you're without any knowledge at all, yeah. but you have some idea of the religion, and they're giving you explanations which seem to go against everything you've learned of the religion. Exactly. Then, danger sign, mm. be careful. Not necessarily you leave him, but now be careful. You, you go and check out what he's saying and get references and find out and ensure yeah. that yes, okay, yeah, there are a body of scholars yeah. who are reputable scholars mm. who have held these positions, yeah. you know? So like that, I mean, and once you're convinced that the person is firmly on Quran and Sunnah with the understanding of the Sahaba, because that's that clarity. The companions. Yes, yeah. the, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu their understanding of the Quran and Sunnah mm. takes priority over our understanding of Quran and Sunnah. You know? So, so that is your backup. So when he's explaining so and so and so and so, he says, well, you know, Ibn Abbas had held the opinion so and so and so. You know, Anas ibn Malik, he explained that, that, that. You know, Abu Huraira, he added. So that, so. When you see that coming in, then, then you, you can feel comfortable, comfortable now that this is a reliable person who is come to educate you. MashaAllah. Check, you know, in, a t in our times today where we have lots of YouTube speakers and few scholars, what advice will you give to those youth that take their knowledge directly from the internet? Well, again, you must be careful mm. from two perspectives. From one perspective, in that your knowledge, if taken f solely from the internet or just attending uh, conferences and yeah. lectures, etc., will be scattered knowledge you know knowledge which you cannot pass on to anyone else yeah right first of all why because you are not getting it in a systematic way where you can build on it mm -hmm. it's just bits and pieces. yeah you heard it before if you sat in oh, yeah i remember i heard the hadith. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah i remember the sheikh's once so he talked about that so you can these memories scattered. are there yeah but if somebody asks you okay not can you give us a dars a, a, a lesson on Tawheed al rububiya mm. <laughs> oh, uh, No, no, I, I listened to the lecture, I did understand it, but, but I, I can't give it. You know? mm. Well, if, if you didn't uh, really understand it, mm. then you won't be able to give it. Sure. But if you really understood it, you would. But to really understand it, you need to get it in a, uh, an academically sound package. Mm. It needs to be properly packaged. Mm not bits and pieces here and there. <laughs> you heard a piece today, you know, six months later you heard another, heard another piece and here and there. So my advice is to join uh, programs like the Islamic Online University yeah. where leading scholars are putting that information together in a systematic and structured way mm -hmm. because that's how you really learn. You know, it's like when you're learning mathematics, if you don't learn the times table, mm. you just went on. You can get by, you can count on your fingers, count on your toes, yeah, you know, you, sure. you can get by, <laughs> but eventually it's gonna catch up with you, it's gonna be a mess. That's true. You know, you won't be able to handle when the big problems come, you can't resolve it, because no. you haven't got built that foundation. Mm. So it's like, that structured format gives you the times tables. That's, that's your base on which you get everything else. proper adds. understanding. Exactly. So, of all the science of the religion, which do you recommend we give utmost priority in our times today? Well, let's say in all times, yeah. priority should be given to aqidah, to tawheed. Tawheed. That's the beginning point. Mm. You know, if that's not proper, and you've gone off in your fiqh, and you've gone off in the other area, but your tawheed is messed up, then you may end up in shirk without even realizing it. Hmm. You know, you may end up your worship, your, your, your concepts 
of Allah distorted, you know, so shaitan can get at you, etc. No, that is the beginning point because mm -hmm. we need to know Allah first and foremost. Okay. And as they say, you know, scholars say that the status yeah. of any area of knowledge mm -hmm. is determined by its content. Mm -hmm. So now, if Allah is the most important person or being that we need to know, because our shahada begins with declaring him to be One. the creator, sustainer of the universe, sure. the only God deserving of our worship. So if that is the most important, then the knowledge field mm. the, uh, that, that focuses on Allah and human beings' relationship with Allah, etc., that must be the most important. Sure. Yeah. So that, that's just common sense tells us, yeah, that's, that, that's, so that's where we need to be most. Yeah. You know? So a lot of people want today, you know, they made a lot of mistakes, they didn't have time to study their religion then, especially among the Muslim youth. What books do you recommend for, you know, people that also want to begin to begin to, you know, to study their religion? Well, it depends on the books available on the on the market no. you know where uh, the scholars writing in your local languages or um, in it could be in English as a common language no. I mean that will determine which books to recommend because I don't know what's available in the market here no, really. but I mean I can say personally because having uh, come from a position of ignorance uh, coming into the religion as a convert and studying the religion from its sources, etc., you know, and becoming a teacher of the religion and, and, and a writer myself, mm. you know, that if you said, well, which of your books, meaning my books, yeah. I could yeah. more easily say, well, okay, yes, The Fundamentals of Tawheed, that's probably the most important book which I wrote. Okay, it's translated in English? It's in English. Yes. Okay, okay, it is in English. It's okay. been translated into other languages. Okay. But that is the fundamental... Uh, uh, text, mm. the most important text which I have written, yeah. which has combined from a variety of other classical texts, mm. you know, and, and packaged there. Okay. So that is the uh, fundamentals of Tawheed. In that area, again, I did also a commentary on a book called Lum'atul I'tiqad, mm. or The Radiance of Faith. So that book, uh, which focuses more on uh, what they call Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat you know, about Allah's attributes, etc. Uh, that is also a primary text, no. you know. That is, it was written by Ibn Qudama, a mm. great scholar from the, um, the Hanbali Madhab, okay. basically, but uh, he taught beyond the Madhab. Um, and then, you know, the, the books of um, uh, this is a Kuwaiti scholar, um, Dr. Uh, his name slips my mind, but he did a series uh, which are on Aqidah. Mm -hmm. It's a series about 10 books. Uh, and um, it's, it's published by the International Islamic Publishing House, IIPH. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, as I said the name escapes me at the moment, <laughs> but um, that series is an excellent series. It it has you know it deals with all of the the basic areas, whether it's um, uh, it is iman, the mm. pillars of iman, and what's connected to iman. Each each text it focus on focuses on one aspect no. of the pillars of iman. Really, yeah. you know, Mashallah. that's the the series. Mm -hmm. MashaAllah. So, uh, what do you say to those who, you know, seek for knowledge simply for the reason to gain self-recognition and to compete with other people? Well, of course, this is dangerous. This is destructive. Mm -hmm. You know, it leads to uh, extreme uh, attitudes uh, where one may seek to put other scholars down because they want to promote themselves. themselves. Mm. Um, those who don't follow the scholars who I follow, then 
they're considered to be deviant. Mm. You know, these kind of ideas arise, like takfiri type, yeah. you know, you know, putting others down. Yeah. You know, the, the, this, the, you become now the extreme of whatever uh, group or movement you're involved in mm. uh, that leads to that. Uh, those are the secret thoughts, the secret feelings that produce that kind of expression, mm. you know? Because uh, we have to be tolerant of other ideas, yeah. you know? When we start to look at this ourselves as having exclusive right and, and um, knowledge, mm. which anybody else who contradicts us is now deviated and, and misguided and uh, mubtadir and all, all the other kinds of names that people start to throw on oh, those who don't follow your way, mm. you know, then this is destructive, it breaks up the ummah, and um, this is not what the deen has called for. Yeah. You know, the early generation were tolerant of different opinions. The Sahaba didn't all have one opinion. Mm. You know, some issues, yes, of course, the oneness of Allah, etc. But, you know, some Sahaba, they thought that the Prophet saw Allah. Yeah. Whereas the majority and yes, those yeah. who had spoken to him directly said, no, he didn't. Mm. You know, so you had different opinions which arose among them, which were opinions, some of them opinions were fiqh opinions, mm. you know, like the, the issue of praying in uh, Bani Quraidha, where the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba to go and pray, yeah. you know, um, in a particular location. Um, there are asr there, mm. you know, and what was intended was not certain in, in the minds of the Sahaba. They, they left off some understood that he meant to hurry up and get there. Some understood that he meant literally to pray there. Right there. Right. So when Maghrib approached, and now comes the point, what do we do? Do we pray Maghrib, we pray Asr? Because we haven't prayed Asr yet. Yeah. Maghrib is, you know, just, we see the sun is starting to set. What do we do? Yeah. You know, those who felt that he just meant hurry up and get there, say, okay, we'll pray there, as he said. <laughs> Exactly what he said. So some of them prayed there. So some of them delayed and prayed their, their asr after the time of Maghrib. Mm. After Maghrib had come in, they prayed their asr there. Yeah. Whilst others said, no, he intended for us to hurry. So we better pray on time. As Allah said, prayers are at fixed times. Definitely. Right? Yeah. So we'll just stick with that one, you know, because what Allah said, obviously Prophet Muhammad is, said. is not going to go against what Allah hmm, said. Definitely. So, <laughs> so that difference arose. But they didn't declare each other to be deviants, yeah. you know, misguided, etc., mm. etc. When the Prophet Muhammad heard of their difference, he said nothing. Mm. He didn't blame one or blame the other. But he himself, prayed on the way, Inshallah. you know? So he is indicating indirectly that his intent was in fact for them to hurry yeah. up and get there. Exactly. But where his words could be interpreted in more than one way, mm. he approved of the right for people to understand it in more than one way, yeah. you know? And that's why he said, the. The mujtahid, the one who is seeking to understand and to find the rulings for, you know, correct rulings for certain issues, if he's right, he gets one reward. He gets two rewards, mm. sorry. And if he's wrong, he gets one, one reward. reward. You know? So the, the meaning that it is valid for one to take other positions which are based on evidence, etc., yeah. which may not be the popular opinion, etc. It is legitimate to have that other opinion. Okay. You know? Yeah. As long as one is not doing it for, as you said, for fame or for, you know, to compete to others. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Sheikh, a lot of people, you know, today say we are, we are busy, we go to school, we go to work, no time to lend a din. Do you think this is a valid excuse? Well, in our times, no. Mm. Not with the internet. Islamic Online University is available. No, you can't say. You can just sit in your office, in your house, and you can learn the religion from the internet. On your way driving to, you can listen to MP3. Uh, wow. You know, 
the, even the woman at home, <laughs> she's ironing, she's cooking, she's got her earphones on. So we have no reason like, no, not to seek No for excuses knowledge. now. In I the old know. days, yes, because people had to leave, had to travel mm -hmm. outside of the country, you know, maybe travel for years. They went out to seek knowledge. Sure. They didn't come back until 10 years later, 15 years later, sure. you know. Now, this, this knowledge is at our fingertips. Mm. So there's no excuse really today. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. It's been beautiful having you on the show. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you so much. So there we was. We've come to the end of today's 